Today, we're joined by the Honourable Jonathan Wilkinson, Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, who will begin with some remarks, uh, followed by His Worship, Mayor Nancy. So I'm going to uh, open the floor uh, to questions once remarks are complete as well. And with that, I'll turn it over to the Minister. Thank you uh, very much for that introduction and thank you to everybody for joining us today. Despite the exceptional circumstances, I'm certainly glad that we are able to connect from our homes and our offices. I, I would also like to, uh, to start by acknowledging that uh, I am in North Vancouver and I'm joining you from, uh, from the place that is located on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh and the Squamish nations. I would also like to acknowledge that the city of Calgary is uh, located on Treaty 7 territory and the traditional territory of the Nitsitapi, the Nakoda and the Tutsina peoples. These are certainly extraordinary times. COVID-19 has led to tremendous loss and uncertainty. It certainly has created challenges for Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Our government's number one priority has been and remains keeping Canadians safe and supporting families and businesses during these very challenging times. But as our economies start to reopen, as they have, uh, we have an exciting opportunity, I think, to begin thinking about the kind of future we want with safe communities, predictable jobs, a supply chain that is reliable, and certainly a greener economy. Canada is warming at twice the global rate and three times, uh, three times in the north, three times the global rate. 2019 was the second hottest year on record. Canadians across the country and certainly Albertans are on the forefront of feeling the effects of climate change, experiencing floods, wildfires and droughts. And that is why our government's climate plan, the first real climate plan this country has ever had, contains over 50 different measures and is on track to deliver the biggest cut in emissions in greenhouse gas emissions in Canada's history. Since 2016, the Government of Canada has allocated over $2.4 billion for investments in public transit projects in Alberta and over a billion dollars for investments in green infrastructure. In addition, the Low Carbon Economy Fund is focused on reducing emissions and creating opportunities in Alberta by providing nearly $150 million to support clean projects. Climate action offers us an enormous opportunity going forward. The clean economy is expected to grow to $26 trillion and create 65 million jobs worldwide by 2030. And certainly Alberta and Alberta companies and Alberta people need to be part of ensuring uh, that that prosperity is uh, accrues to us in, uh, in Canada across this country. Today, I am very thrilled to announce that uh, the Government of Canada is investing about $2 million from the Low Carbon Economy Fund to support the City of Calgary's successful Willow Plantation Program, helping it expand by 300 new hectares of trees over three years. This will, uh, the, the Willows act as a carbon sink and will store carbon and help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This investment will help the City of Calgary to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by about 200,000 tonnes cumulatively over the life of the project. That is the equivalent of taking about 61,000 passenger cars off the road for one year. Some of you may know that this is part of a unique program that revitalizes what's considered marginal land by fertilizing it with biosolids from the city's wastewater treatment facilities. This makes the land usable, allowing the City of Calgary to plant willow trees, which results in a versatile number of uses, including woody feedstock for composting and biomass for fuel. We are very proud to support the City of Calgary as it focuses on reaching its climate action goals. It's leadership like this that will help Canada to meet and exceed our 2030 climate target and to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, which science tells us we must. We all want to make sure that Canada emerges from the pandemic stronger and more resilient than before, and our government is committed to doing just that. Let us keep moving forward together, building a healthier, a safer, and a more prosperous future for our children and our grandchildren. That is what this announcement today is all about. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Minister Wilkinson. I'm now pleased to, to uh, introduce Mayor Nancy for some remarks from the City of Calgary. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. I see a note here uh, in the chat from Brenda Newfeld saying she's not hearing any audio. 
Um, if you are also not hearing audio, just put it in the chat uh, and we'll make Minister Wilkinson say that all over again. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you all so much uh, for joining us on uh one of these beautiful last days of summer here in Calgary. And thank you, Minister Wilkinson, uh, for being here with us to make this important announcement. And I wanna say thank you particularly to the Government of Canada uh, for this funding. This is a very interesting project uh, and one that we're very happy to showcase because it really helps us deal with two major issues that we have to deal with uh, here in Calgary as we look at our responsibility for stewarding the land, the air and the water. The first is the great work that Nancy Stalker and her team do every day in ensuring that we have the best wastewater treatment systems in the world. Uh, and one of those things means that we got to deal with what we euphemistically call biosolids, uh, which are the byproducts of the wastewater treatment plant. They're not exactly what you think they are, but they certainly are uh, heavily organic material that is left over uh, after advanced wastewater treatment. And part of managing biosolids is mixing them in with our compost facilities, but there needs to be more than that. And we need to be able to do more than that. And one of the reasons this project is so great is because it's so simple. We're planting trees. And the Willow Tree Farm is a project we've looked, started looking at seven years ago. And what it really allows us to do is use the, um, use the biosolids to create a system where we can plant many, many trees um, and help replace chemical fertilizers in their use. So when I said land, air and water, we're really dealing with all three. It's assisting with our wastewater treatment. It's helping us manage our land better through a reduction in the use of chemical fertilizers. And it has a significant carbon reduction component uh, in the air. Uh, we believe that the Willow Tree Farm will be about the same as taking 61,000 cars off the road for one year. And these are the sorts of things that make a big difference. You know, when we talk about the green economy, when we talk about new technology, certainly we're often talking about very advanced technology in thinking about how we can maintain our lifestyles. But this is actually very simple technology. It's about planting trees, but it has a significant uh, impact in doing that. And Calgary really is a leader in the reduction of emissions, in the stewardship of land, and in the stewardship of the air. So I'm really happy that uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada has recognized uh, this project um, in the work that we're doing here in Calgary through this grant. And so we're very grateful to our partners at the Government of Canada here, and we're gonna get busy planting some willow trees. So with that, I'll turn it back to Adam, Nancy, I think, for some final remarks, and then Adam will start taking questions. Go ahead, Nancy. Terrific, uh, Mayor Nancy, thank you. Um, I really want to say, you know, as Director of Water Services, we are so very proud of our advanced wastewater treatment and and the innovative work that our team's done over the last seven years. It's It's been very exciting. And I'd, I'd also like to thank Minister Wilkinson, federal government for its funding. It's important that we're all working together for a strong, healthy environment uh, for our future. And, and specifically this, this project and the grant funding, as, as you both spoke to, will um, allow us to double the size of the project, which helps us achieve a number of those things you've spoken about, improving uh, marginal Brenda land. Brenda Neufeld grow, is um, now joining is Hi, Brenda, um, joining us. Uh, enhancing the water utilities, uh, biosolid management. We have to, how, what do we do with that? Um, really important and uh, how we're uh, also supporting greenhouse gas reduction and increasing are uh, the biomass for potential other uses. It's got a win-win all around. It's it's just a really neat project. So a couple other facts uh, that mentioned, um, uh, as Mayor Nancy spoke to, it's an alternative to using chemical-based fertilizer, using what we've got as a real resource, improving marginal lands, carbon sequestration, um, as well as uh, creating some, some new benefits for us and, and reducing um, and enhancing the ability of our, our lagoons to deal with some of the, the things that are coming our way. So through the funding, uh, City of Calgary is expanding and planting uh, 300 new hectares of willow over the next uh, three years, which is super exciting. 
practical management of biosolids for, for a large uh, city here in Calgary, valuable resource in reducing our gas emissions. So uh, kudos all around. Thank you. And I'd, I'd like to open the floor then for, for questions from reporters uh, on the line. And I'm going to turn things over to Adam, who will be moderating this portion of uh, the today's event. So over to Adam uh, to address. All right. Our first question comes from Tom Ross. Tom, uh, please go ahead. I oh, can't hear you, Tom. Hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, topic of the day, I guess, uh, not necessarily related to this announcement. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there's that memorandum of understanding about a Hyperloop project uh, in Alberta. I'm curious of your thoughts about this, and uh, what do you think is the future of, you know, transportation options all around Alberta now? Thanks. Um, I will answer that. Um, but uh, what I will ask everyone is if you have questions on this, let's clear those first and uh, then we'll let Minister Wilkinson go, though I'm sure he has stuff to say about Hyperloop um, and I can do other <laughs> questions of the day. Uh, this is a really interesting thing. You know, the city of Calgary, as you know, has been offering up um, a lot of our municipal assets as what we call living labs. In fact, the announcement we're making today is part of that as well. Uh, so we have, for example, Canada's first and only, I think, urban drone testing facility. Uh, and we've also been offering up with our partners at the Government of Alberta uh, land and facilities for Hyperloop testing. Uh, so I was really happy to hear the announcement today on that because, you know, just this week I was talking to someone who travels uh, the QE2 often between Calgary and Edmonton, who was just talking about how dangerous it is, particularly in the winter and how overcrowded that highway is getting with the movement of goods uh, and people. We've talked about high speed rail for so long since I was a little kid. Um, between uh, Calgary and Edmonton. And if this is a technology that really is close to being real, then that could really make a huge difference for the Calgary Edmonton Red Deer Tech Corridor, uh, as well as uh, more safe movement of goods and people uh, through that corridor. So I'm excited about it. Uh, I don't know if it's real. I don't know if it's science fiction, but we'll never know unless we continue to do more testing uh, with folks other than uh, one entrepreneur who talks about stuff a lot in the US. So um, I'm really pleased about that. I'm pleased that it's a Canadian company that is doing the work. And I think that Calgary Edmonton, look, it's a straight line and it's flat prairie in between. Uh, there'll never be a better place uh, to uh, implement this technology if it works than here. Yeah, follow up, Tom. Um, well, yeah, if uh, Minister Wilkinson wants to comment on it as well, and just overall, you know, what do you think about uh, high speed rail options and options like these around Canada? Well, I, I mean, we're certainly looking at at some of these options, uh, not only uh, the corridor that Mayor Nenshi talked about, but certainly the corridor in uh, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa. Um, I think that there's a lot of interest in high-speed rail, both for, because uh, it obviously would enable folks to uh, to get to places more quickly, and but it would also uh, help us with respect to the greenhouse gas emissions of getting people out of their cars um, and potentially uh, enabling people to think about other options than short-haul flights, um, which, as you know, uh, cause significant greenhouse gas emissions. So it's definitely something that's on the radar, um, and uh, I know it's being looked at in a number of areas. Uh, there are obviously different options with respect to that. Uh, the Hyperloop is a, is a technology option that is, uh, is I think, still... Uh, you know, being worked through, but certainly it is very interesting, and uh, and uh, I think we're certainly interested in options around high speed. Okay, I think we're getting off easy here today, <laughs> Minister. So we'll let you enjoy uh, your yourself. last few days you of summer here. Thank you again uh, for this great announcement today, and hopefully, when and we can travel again, we'll have you come see the report trees. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. All right, bye bye. Take Thanks care. Bye bye. Thank you.